I'm Edie Lush and I'm outside the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos with a very finely dressed David Schreier. Thank you very much for stepping outside. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here again, Edie, and to see you as we continue our collaboration with Hub Culture. Exactly. This is now, I think, our third year that we're doing joint events with Stan Stalnecker and the Hub Culture team. And we at MIT Connection Science are thrilled that we have the opportunity to collaborate. So I know that you've been working a lot on digital identity. Absolutely. And you've been looking at the European regulations and you've come up with a solution, a privacy solution, is that right? Yeah, so, so there are a lot of things going on right now in Europe. One of these is uh, significant new privacy regulations that are going to be uh, coming into effect in 2018, which means everyone's scrambling now to implement them. And, and another is an effort across the EU to promote a single digital identity for all of the member countries. Um, and so these two things are coming into collision right now. Um, we at MIT have a solution to some of these problems and more with our trust data framework, uh, which you can see more about at trust.mit.edu. And tell me what it does. Tell me what it does for me as an individual wandering around the web, trying to do some, some banking, some shopping, a little bit of social media. How does it protect me? Absolutely. So um, one of the problems with this move to digital identity is we're still stuck in analog models. So what's, people have come up with some solutions to say, okay, we're going to use your fingerprints or your retina scan to mm -hmm. definitely verify you are you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great until someone steals your fingerprint file yeah. because you can't get another set of fingerprints. Mm. Um, so we've proposed something different. We say that your core identity, your core irrevocable biometric identity is something that is highly secure and protected and that you have something that's known as self-sovereign identity. You take control of your identity. You now have the ability to say, okay, I want to go shopping, so I'm going to create a single instance of Edie. I'm going to create a version of me just for one transaction on Amazon and I'm going to uh, uh, affect a transaction with that persona that mm -hmm. I've created. Or I want to access health records, so I want a persistent record of my health records, but I don't want it tied to my work or my shopping. Mm -hmm. And so I can create my health ED, and that'll be able to uh, let you share information across health platforms without contaminating with these other kinds of identities. So this self-sovereign identity is a very powerful concept, and it's essential to the trust data framework. But how do you keep it from being stolen? These things all get stolen, don't they? Hackers get smarter every day. So, so there is a big problem. We've had huge problems in the U.S. In fact, if uh, you either work for the government or were even a contractor, uh, all of your very intimate personal details were stolen when the Office of Personnel Management was hacked. So mm -hmm. it's an acute problem for a lot of us uh, in the U.S. Um, so uh, part of the Trust Data Framework is also better data security. So we have something called the MIT Enigma project, mm -hmm. which uses blockchain, which uses encryption to take critical data, like for example, your personal information, your, your ED biometric identity, mm -hmm. and break it into a thousand shards. All of them get encrypted, all of them get spread out into a blockchain, mm -hmm. and um, through powerful computational processes known as secure multi-party computation with secret sharing, we have the ability to still use that information even while it's encrypted. So it's several orders of magnitude more secure than the existing methods that we have today. Okay, so all this stuff, the digital identity, not just important for me as a shopper living in the UK, but also important for people who currently have problems with their digital identity. Well, they don't have an identity whatsoever. They don't have a birth certificate. Yeah. Millions of children who don't have birth certificates, for example. How will this help them? And so, so this, is a, this is a critical problem. We have some wonderful collaborators, uh, John Edge and Dakota Gruner from ID2020 are doing some great work on this. And, and so, um, essentially, your, this device, where's my phone? I've got it here somewhere. Here, your I've mobile phone yep. is uh, uh, something that you have with you all the time, mm -hmm. and it's something that can be used to give you a new form of identity. So this is something that um, is ubiquitous. There are 500 million smartphones that are going into Africa mm -hmm. over the next five years. Um, and this can be used to deliver uh, identity solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a billion and a half people in the world who lack a legal identity today. Many of them are women, many of them are children. This leads to exploitation. Mm -hmm. uh, and so ID2020, our group at MIT, MIT Connection Science, and others are banding together to try and deliver solutions to the world that can address this critical identity challenge. David, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion. I'll take my phone. I'll Absolutely. take my identity back. This is it. For sure. <laughs> it's all on here. You bet. Thank, thank you, you very Edie. Much. Thank you.